Let's have a look at question 9 in this video. So suppose we view current and future consumption as one-to-one -one complements. What would be the optimal bundle now? Well, because we view them as complements, it means we care about them equally. We would like the same amount in the present and in the future, meaning that the, the optimal bundle, the consumption in the present, must equal to consumption in the future. So how can we get to that? Well, we have to use our intertemporal budget constraint, which is this one, intertemporal budget constraint. Now, how can we write this intertemporal budget constraint? Since this is a line, we can write the shape of a line. So let's do it. We have that consumption in the second period, C2 equals to the intercept, which is 430.5 minus the slope. And recall, what is the slope of an intertemporal budget line? Is the one plus the interest rate, because that's the opportunity cost of not keeping the money in the bank. So minus 1.05, since the interest rate was 5%, times consumption in the present. Now, how can we solve this? Well, by substitution. We'll just substitute consumption one into consumption two, since they're the same. So we would have now consumption in the first period equals to 430.5 minus 1.05 times consumption one. Now we have consumption one in both terms, so we can add them. We'll take this term on the other side and solve the math. So we would have consumption 1 plus 1.05 consumption 1 equals to 430.5. Let's zoom out to get some space here. So consumption 1 plus 1.05 consumption 1 would be 2.05 because the coefficient here is just 1. So that's 2.05 times consumption in the first period equals to 430.5 which means that consumption 1 in the optimal bundle is equal to 430.5 divided by 2.05 and that's equal to $210 and that's also equal to the consumption in the second period since they are equal. That's what we said and that's how we solved it. We are done.